Baldwin County staff. In this instructional technology video, I'd like to show you how you can use IPVO, both the Visualizer app and the iDocCam app to make a makeshift document camera for use at home to help you during these NTI strategy days. So let's get started with talking about, well, how does this work? So you will need to have devices such as, so you need your teacher Chromebook um, that's probably issued to you from school. And that is where we're going to have this IPVO Visualizer app downloaded from the Chrome Web Store. Um, this is vetted through the district and it's acceptable to download. And so you can download that by going to the Chrome Web Store, finding IPVO Visualizer, and where mine says launch, it will say download for you. And then after that, you will find it, and we'll look at this here in a minute, your apps are located in your launcher and you'll find it down here within your launcher after you've downloaded it. The second app that you need is something to make your phone or your personal device, um, could be an iPad or a cell phone, um, into that document camera. And so this is available on both the Android devices, so through Google Play Store, as well as iOS through Apple. Um, it looks like this icon, and it's called the iDocCam, and it is also by IPVO. And so that's how they connect and work together. Um, how I see this working for you is it could be a document camera for you to show students something in real time. So you might be on something like a Google Meet and you're modeling it for them. Or it could be that you're trying to record something for a lesson for them to do um, to watch later on something like Screencastify. So it would work either way. So let me show you how to get started and how easy it is. So I have both this IPVO Visualizer downloaded as an app on this Chromebook that I'm modeling on. And then on my personal cell phone, I have iDocCam. So to get started, I'm going to go here through my launcher and I'm going to open up the app IPVO Visualizer. And when it first pops up, it will show me because I'm not, I've not connected my phone quite yet. And so here I am, and we'll walk through some of these tools that you see here on the sides here in a minute. And so next one I'll show you is, I have my phone out. Um, and so on my phone, I have that iDocCam that I just shared with you. So when I click on it, um, it opens up and it makes my phone into a document here. As you can see, it's looking around my house. Um, but in order for me to actually connect this to my Chromebook so that I can see it large screen or show students on Google Meet, I have to come up here to this icon here. And where it says integrated webcam, that's the default. As long as my phone and my actual um, Chromebook are on the same internet connection, so make sure at home they're both on the same connection. And I'm now I'm going to find my iPhone. It's that easy. I did not have to do anything to set that up. It automatically recognized it as another device and it will load. And as you can see now on my computer screen, it is showing my device. Um, I want to show you literally how easy it is to make a stand. Um, I know some of you probably have nicer stands. You can use stacks of books. You could use a wire shelf as long as that camera on the back of your phone is exposed. I am literally going to use um, a box of saltine crackers <laughs> as my holder for my document camera. I know it's not ideal, but um, in these times we do what we can do that what works. And so as you can see, I'm literally just using this to show my paper. It could be a book you have under here, anything you want to show your students. Um, and so there it is. And so now I'm going to even kind of clean it off a little bit. So there I can see my document. Um, I know it's not clear right now, but one tool I was going to show you anyways is here, this focus button. So this will let me refocus. And um, that's a little bit better. Um, I'll also, I can make sure I can put more books here to make it larger, smaller. I can do whatever I need to do here um, to make this best fit. So as I can, as you can see, you can see that in here. Um, other tools that you have, you can zoom in and out here through this tool. You can choose to rotate it. So sometimes it's not the correct way you want it to be shown. So if you click on these different ones, it will actually rotate that for you. And you can also choose to mirror it horizontally, vertically, as we know how that it can be tricky when you show something. Here, this is our resolution. I recommend keeping it normal. And then here is our exposure. I would just keep that where it is. Um, other tools over here that I absolutely love. Um, this will turn on my actual light on my phone. As you notice, it got a little bit brighter there um, for me to use. I can turn that on and off. I can freeze it. So if you are wanting to show a book, um, I'll show the only book I have, sorry, is a children's book here. Um, and I can even add another box here to make it even taller to see my book. 
So if I wanted to model a book for students or read that aloud, I could do that. And so I've got my book there now. Um, you can freeze it. So that's what that snowflake is. It freezes it. So even if I'm, I'm moving my book right now, but you don't know I am, that really helps for annotating. We'll go over those tools in a second. Um, and then I love this tool. Um, it helps to, the first time you click it, it gives you where you can kind of really focus in on something. It's a reading tool. The second time you click it, it actually makes everything else dark so you really can focus in on something. And the third time you click it, it takes it back to normal. You have grid views here. So every time you click on it, it splits the screen in different grids. And then this is our refocus button again. So as you can see, it refocuses for us. Um, what's great is you could in real time put your hand under here with a pen and actually annotate on something or highlight it if you wanted to. So if you're someone that likes that pen to paper, you can do that. Or if you're someone who likes to annotate digitally, you also have this little pin here. So when you click on the pin, you have different colors and you can choose a color to annotate. Maybe you want to do something in blue here on your screen and annotate or circle it, whatever you'd like to do. Um, but then something else you could do in red. So anything you're modeling for students, you can do that as well as you've got your eraser. So the eraser, you can erase individual things or if you click it twice, you can make your eraser larger or smaller, as well as just clear all of it. So that makes it really easy. And when you're done, you just put it back away and put those tools back away so now you have your mouse again. Um, also, sorry, there's even more tools I could show you, um, and you are welcome to explore these more. When you click this, I am right now on the actual picture, um, the real life. So if I clicked this, it would take a picture or a screenshot, a snapshot of what I'm trying to show. Um, I could take a video if I wanted to from here. I can do things in slow motion and time lapse as well as scan QR codes. So a lot of options there. You're probably wondering, well, after I take a picture, where is it? Especially if you already annotated something and you want that actual image to refer back to later, maybe to post to your Google Classroom or something. If you come here, these are your images you've taken in Visualizer. So let me make sure I actually take a picture so I can show you what that looks like. So when I click it, there we go. Took that picture, says it's loading. And so now when I come in here, it should be, there it is. There's my JPEG image and you can export it as a PDF or save it anywhere or delete it. I can get back by clicking that again. So, so many tools and visualizer that you can use for free here. Um, like I said, I can imagine us using this in real time. Right now, I could be in a Google Meet and I could be showing my students in real time, annotating a text or annotating um, uh, or solving or working something out, whether it's for math, social studies, science, anything I want to do. Show them something. If I wanted to dissect something here for all of them to see, I could do that as well. Um, and then also you could though, Record this using a tool like Screencastify so you could create lessons for students to watch later. Um, so many implications. Um, like I said, there's a few requirements. You have to first have this IPVO Visualizer um, app downloaded within Chrome. So remember that looks like this and it is on the vetted list so it's able for you to download it. Um, after you have the IPVO visualizer for your Chromebook, so you have to have a Chromebook to do this, then on your personal device, whether it's a tablet or a phone, those can be either Android or iOS based. You need that iDocCam downloaded, also vetted and approved. It's okay to use. Um, and then you have to be, both of those devices need to be on the same network, so the same internet connection, so that when you go to the visualizer, you can find it there when you go to connect. Remember, it will automatically be on the webcam from the Chromebook, but if you find your phone, whatever it's called there, then it will connect instantly. Um, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you find this useful as a strategy for NTI.